About maybe four or five years ago, kale burst onto the health food scene as just one of the hottest greens in town. And in the garden, it's really been here for a long time. We grow this all the time and we've used it for many years. But the question is, how do you actually harvest kale and get the most out of it? Kevin Espiritu here from Epic Gardening, where it's my goal to help you grow a greener thumb. And really with kale, the classic way to harvest it is a cut and come again style harvest where you can come around the stalk and just pluck it away. But as we move into summer, kale just doesn't do that well in the heat. It much prefers these colder temperatures. The growth is better. The sweetness of the flavor is better. And so this bed, I just need to get all this kale out of here. So I figured what better time to show you both how I harvest it, how I approach harvesting it, when's the best time to harvest it, as well as at the end of this video, I'm gonna turn all this kale into one of my favorite kale recipes, kale chips. So without further ado, cultivate that like button for Epic Kale, and let's get into it. The first thing to look at here is just how kale grows. So you can see it comes up off of this main stalk and you have leaves that protrude out in a sort of stair step like fashion. Now this one here is a bit yellow and that's what happens as kale matures. It goes yellow, it becomes very easy to just pluck off. The flavor on this is gonna be pretty atrocious. So this is gonna go into the worm bin. But if you were wanting to preserve this stock, what you would do is you would come through and either chop off like this or just pluck off these lower leaves and then you still have the entire root system and the entire stalk with new growth coming out up here. Again, if you're harvesting kale and you wanna preserve the plant, you just wanna avoid harvesting in this interior section because look, this is where all of the new leaves are coming out. So if you were to chop this section off, the plant has no ability to continue growing. Now, as far as the best time to harvest, it's almost always gonna be early morning before the heat of the day has hit the kale. So it is early morning right now. In fact, there's actually a light mist going on, which is pretty cool. So I'm popping off in my Epic Harvest apron, which I custom designed with a company that makes like super high-end coffee gear. And I said, why don't we make the coolest apron of all time? So I'll leave a link in the video description for that, but I've got my Felco F2s and let's make short work of harvesting this kale. Now, again, I'm gonna take the plant completely out. You don't have to do that if you want it to keep growing, but I wanna use this bed for summer crops. So I'm cutting off directly at the surface of the soil, but I'm leaving the roots in because this soil is nice and alive and the roots will break down and add to the soil over time. Before I bring these inside and we actually, ew, what just, that was so gross. I think there's a pest on this one. Before, before I bring these off and bring them inside, I'm just gonna take off some of these outer ones because the lowest and outermost are gonna be the oldest and most likely to not taste very good. And it does look like on some of these kale plants, I had a little bit of an aphid problem. You know, the older they go, the harder they can be to protect from some of those pests. So they're starting to get a little weaker. They're getting old they're maturing and they just aren't able to hold off as much, but that's fine. That's what we're here for, to help care for these plants. So I'm just pulling all of this stuff off at the bottom and then what I'll do is go through in the kitchen and give it a nice wash. I changed my mind and we're actually gonna just be giving it a nice wash out here. This will need to go through a couple different rough washes because I did notice some aphid pressure on here and I don't wanna eat aphids, so. I'm just gonna make sure I give it a nice wash, maybe two or three different times to get everything off. Because on these ones, I mean, it's if an aphid's hiding, it's sometimes hard to get it away if it's this curly style kale, right? So you gotta like peel things back, make sure they're not there and all that. So we're gonna give it a nice, nice rinse. Now that we've properly washed our kale, we're not eating any aphids. We've got our stems in the middle and at least for the purposes of the kale chips, I like to remove these because I just want the frilly leaf tissue to really crisp up and be nice and crunchy. So now I have an arduous process of coming through with a knife and just stripping out the stems, which takes a little bit of time. But I just run my knife down each side. I take the stem out. I have the rest of this, I just leave it over here. So let's get that done. So we've got our kale stripped from the stem, but it's still not quite at the level we want it to for the kale chips. So the next step is to rough chop it. You wanna go too thin because then the kale is just like almost like a powder-esque type of thing. So I just give it like a really nice rough chop to break up some of these larger leaves and that's it. 
Then I'm just gonna spread it out, let it air dry for a little bit, and we'll get into the actual preparation of the chips. One more thing I forgot after the rough chop, I just like to give it a nice sort of bruising to just soften it up a little bit. It'll lay flatter, it'll be a little bit easier to cook in my opinion, and the texture I feel is slightly improved. So optional, but I sure seem to like it. And I think it's better to do this before you let it air dry rather than after, because you are going to damage the plant a little bit. Now that we have it nice and dry, I'm just gonna load it all up into its own bowl. And the secret about making it nice and crispy is not to add too much oil. You need to have oil, but it can't be too much because if you have too much, it won't actually crisp up. It'll just remain a little bit soggy. So what I do is I take maybe two tablespoons of oil, just enough to like really lightly coat it, really lightly coat it, and then I get a little liberal on the spices. And again, the spices I use, it's just smoked paprika, boom, salt and pepper. That's all it is. Does not take much more than that to get a nice kale chip going. So we've got them nicely laid out on their trays. They go in at 350 for about 12 minutes or so, and you just want the edges to be crispy. You don't want them to burn, because then of course they taste horrible. So we'll be back in exactly 12 minutes. So what we want is, just listen. That's the sound you want. You don't want it to have any sort of sogginess to it. So you've got these nice crunchy chips that are honestly best eaten pretty fresh. So I would get these in your mouth ASAP. So that's the way that I do kale, harvesting it and turning it into a really good crunchy snack if you don't like to eat it normally. But I'm curious what you like to do with kale, so drop it down in the comments below. And until next time, good luck in the garden and the kitchen, and keep on growing.